This happened about one and a half years ago. I was in an online campaign already, but wanted to try an in-person game. So I attended a game night at my local game store. I was very new to playing D&D. I had joined my first campaign about four months prior. I found a table that was setting up a one-shot and asked if I could join in. They were cool and added me in, so I picked a pre-rolled character sheet and added in a few details. I really enjoyed the one-shot, but we didn't quite finish a lot of it. DM commented that she hadn't balanced the encounters well, and that we were probably going to make quick work of the rest of it. She seemed frustrated by this. We end the session, and we all agreed to return in one week, on the next game night, and finish up the one-shot. The next week, I arrive to the store about 10 minutes before the time we had agreed to start. I walk in and see three new people at the table. I informed that the dungeon master decided to cancel finishing the one-shot because she couldn't figure out how to balance the rest of the encounters. Instead, She's starting a longer campaign? Wait, what? I need to be honest with you. Yeah, what's up? This has been a lot of work. You know, creating this one shot has just taken a lot out of me. And I think it's time. Hey, look, dude, I totally get it. If you need to take a break running one shots or just want someone else to DM for a while, I, I think that it's totally reasonable what? to- no. It's time for me to run a full campaign. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm already like completely planning it out. It's going to be based around this superficial virtual world. How did you world even get built around a sci-fi universe? So it's going to be both sci-fi and fantasy, exploring the concept. Is this going to be like ten thousand tons? Which I fully homebrewed out. I mean, I haven't fully homebrewed anything. Are you even Actually, I haven't done anything yet. So I'll just like. In my head. I don't handle sudden slash unexpected changes very well. Thanks, autism. But I did my best to roll with the punches. So I started working on rolling up a new character because I was still very new to Dungeons and Dragons. I wasn't very fast at building up a character sheet, so I'm sitting there, working as quickly as I can, when I hear the DM remark, if people would show up early to game nights, we'd be playing right now. I took this personally, as I was the only person who was still working on a character sheet. I played through the session with the character I built, and it went fine, but I left there feeling disappointed, and kind of like I was a bother for not showing up earlier. I haven't gone back to a game night since then, but I still shop at the store whenever I'm in need of TTRPG supplies. Honestly, my party showing up on time is them showing up early. This dude arrived 10 minutes early, and apparently that wasn't enough for the DM. Come on, if you're gonna redo the entire campaign into something new, you gotta expect a little bit of delays. The story is from the very first time I played Dungeons and Dragons, circa 2014 slash 2015. I've always wanted to try it and thought it was really fun, but didn't have the opportunity to play for a while. The cast in the story is myself, my friend Karen, her roommate at the time Robert, and my boyfriend Derek. Robert was the dungeon master in this game as he mentioned that he was really into the game and wanted to DM this campaign he's been working on for a while. My boyfriend played on and off with his group of friends and he wanted to get into a new game. Karen and I had not played before so we thought it would be a good chance to do so. Derek and Robert gave me the rundown of the class and races so I created an elven druid as it felt like the easiest one for me to start out with. <laughs> People keep on saying druid is the hardest class to start out with. I don't know if that's true, but... God, it's certainly not the easiest. I didn't really create a backstory for her, but I figured I would figure it out as I went along. Also, I didn't even know that I needed one. So the game starts, we are in a tavern, and our party gets a job to go save this noble who was kidnapped. We traveled into the forest, the place where he was last seen, and we found a turned over carriage and the horse that was pulling it. That horse was still hooked up to the carriage. I got the horse free and had the idea to use speak with animals to see if the horse could tell us what happened. Before I cast my spell though, Robert asks if I was sure that is something I want to do, making me feel like this was the wrong choice for the game. So I just take it back and we kind of just look around for more clues while the horse runs off. I even remember Robert saying that the idea was kind of dumb as the horse wouldn't understand what was happening so it wouldn't even be helpful. I can't remember exactly what happened in the rest of the game as it was years ago but it seemed like every time I wanted to use a spell or just wanted to do anything I was met with the are you sure question. It soon took me a while to think of what to do, constantly second guessing my decisions, and eventually it just became quiet most of the session. Okay, so I'd like to inspect the axe to Are see if- Are you sure? Uh, okay, I guess not. Okay, so I'm just gonna head into the next room. Are you sure? Or I can stay in this room forever. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna take a drink of- but are you oh, sure? Oh, oh, crap! Out! Mm. <coughs> Just 
just went down the wrong pipe. I pretty much just let Derek and Karen pull most of the weight. Later on, we came across an NPC that tagged along to help us out, and I really liked this character, so I wanted him and my character to be friends. Soon after this though, Robert gets us into a fight that results in that NPC getting killed. I was bummed again, but I thought that was just part of the game. We end the session after the fight, and when Derek and I went home, I told him I didn't really feel like continuing the game, and he agreed. We just made excuses that we were busy with work, felt tired, etc, until Robert stopped messaging us about the next game. This experience kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, but I still like D&D, though for a long time I just watched Derek and our friends play their campaign and enjoying their crazy adventures. They did ask if I wanted to join a few times, and I told them no. I didn't want them getting annoyed with me taking too long to think about what my character would do or what to say during roleplay. I'm not the greatest at improv, and I just don't want a session that would normally last two to three hours to become twice as long due to me. Fast forward to around 2022, I met a good friend through TikTok. Oh, good to know that app can do something other than. Anyway, Chad was a very avid Dungeons Dragons player, pretty much knows all there is to know about the game. He asked if I played much, and I told him about my bad first experience, and that's when Chad told me about the term railroading, and that's pretty much all Robert was doing to me, and only me. He didn't do the same thing to Derek and Karen, so I always thought he didn't like me or my character. Pretty soon, Chad sparked up my love for playing the game. He'd involve me in some one-shots with his past characters and the ones I would create, and we treat it like practice games. Chad even invited me and Derek to his campaigns, even making a new one to just play with the three of us. I would describe this as railroading, though it's not the kind of railroading that most people think of. The rough thing about this game is that the dungeon master keeps on making players second guess their decisions, or at least this player. And look, I think it's fine for a DM to give a warning, but as was hopefully conveyed in the skit, doing this for everything is just going to get annoying. You want your players to be decisive. Ginny D made a whole video about players not being decisive and how it's a problem for a lot of games. People just fumbling around, kicking their feet until something happens. Here though, the DM is actively discouraging people to be decisive. I mean, seriously, you think that's gonna help the problem? No, it's just gonna make it worse, especially with new players. So I recently found a group of pretty nice people to play D&D with online via r slash LFG, mind you, so huge success. My friends, you did the impossible. You found a good group in LFG. Anyway, in the adventure the DM is running, kobolds play a huge part. You'll realize why I've written them in all caps and bolded in a moment. We are three sessions into this adventure, and after each session, I post all the notes I took. So I post my notes for session three, as usual, in the Discord server, and after a bit, another player responds to the message with the following. By the way, it's kobold, not kobolt. When I read this message, I needed to do a double take. Wait, what? I thought to myself, this can't possibly be correct. There must be a misunderstanding or something, right? So far as all the notes I've posted and all the times I've mentioned the little lizard guys, I've always used Cobalt. Even before joining this group for at least six years, I have done this. Never since I first saw the little guys in a video game have I ever thought this. No one has ever said anything to me and everyone I've been around always has done the same thing up until now. I looked up Cobalt online and yep, I have been wrong this whole time. I still can't believe it. Surely the internet must be wrong, I think to myself. I got the PDF of the monster manual right there out of the table of context, kobolds on page 195. Maybe it was misspelled once. Nope. Page 195, kobolds. At this point, I just stare at my screen. Do all my friends know this? I think to myself. So I began asking. I asked if all my friends who would know what a kobold is and all of them didn't believe me until they looked it up themselves. Some of them thought it was kobold and some of them thought it was both for some reason. All of us are wrong. This group consists of 23 people, all of whom have played TNT for 5 plus years, one of which has been playing since 3.5. You will never survive. I summon my horde of kobolds! Uh, uh, I... How 
bad is this problem? I asked myself, so I went to find out. I asked many different groups I was in, and all of them there said that at least one person, if not more, had the same revelation that I did. I don't understand how this happened, how it's even possible. Never once in any source book or anywhere else have they ever been called kobolds. And how did this happen? All these people and myself have read kobold and heard kobold, yet here we are thinking it's kobold. How many people, myself included, came to think this? So far, nobody can tell me who the perpetrator is. Some suspect someone who really likes chemistry, misread it, and they never realize. Some suggested autocorrect is the main reason, as sometimes it corrects the word kobold to kobold, which, yep, on my phone did do this. Some suggest it was just misheard, and the name stuck. However, it started. It spread from one person to another, and now, as if waking up from the Matrix, we are all waking up from this lie that we have unknowingly imposed on ourselves for years. Are we insane? Or are other people able to relate to this? So yeah, today my entire worldview and understanding of reality was flipped right onto its head. How was your day? Uh, TLDR, I found out it's Cobalt and not Cobalt. All my friends found this out too, many of which have years of D&D experience. In every group of people I have shown this to, there is at least one person who can't believe until they confirm it themselves. How widespread is this issue? Are we all just crazy? Did you think it was Cobalt as well? Honestly, man, I have never mispronounced Cobalt as Cobalt, and really, like, how hard is it to pronounce fancy terms? Come on. Like, I would never mispronounce anything. <laughs> I know this isn't a horror story, but it was funny, okay? Honestly, the coolest part of the story is seeing how this guy has a community around them to ask about this kind of thing. This is coming from a guy who usually doesn't interact with online communities, but it is important to have at least some people to talk to about your hobbies if you want to improve. Especially as a DM, there's a lot to handle, and getting a little bit of help can be cool, even if it's for dumb pronunciation things like this. Can someone tell this guy that they also mispronounced Cobalt as Cobalt? Because it seems like they're going insane. Hi guys, long time lurker, first time poster. I'm here to submit a horror story that took place in September of 2023. I play a male half-elven fighter named Locke. His TLDR story is that he was captured and branded by my player character's big bad evil guys. Locke would fight their many battles for years until he found a perfect chance to escape. Prior to this, Locke is searching for the person or people responsible for his false imprisonment and clearing his name. The other players I'll introduce at their classes, though really one or two of actual dialogue. Nonetheless, I'll get their backstories and short summaries. The male dragonborn cleric, Kragen, is looking for an ancient sword that has been taken from his church's inventory. Our human warlock, Artemis, not to be confused with Artemis, iconic best girl. What? I like a girl who can help me wipe out my enemies with a single button press. Anyway, this Artemis is a sworn lover to the goddess of pain. Now looking to pass his patron's wishes to others, he makes it clear he speaks like a spoiled rich brat. Mountain dwarf barbarian Sergius, who speaks like a total chad, wants to find his lost daughter. Our elfling, homebrew elf with halfling features, she's a rogue, Sebel, simply wants to find a forever home after losing her village to pillaging. Now, session zero, we're introducing ourselves to the group. The dungeon master says, you're all meeting for the first time in the tavern. The barmaid is serving drinks and food for a discounted price, thanks to a special they're having tonight. What do you do? Do I see any capable fighters should join me on my quest? Kragen asks. The DM responds with, you see a man with long blonde locks fiddling with a crystal trapped in his necklace. That's our warlock. A bearded dwarf playing with his lute to entertain the patrons our barbarian, and a halfling cleaning the bar for coins. That's our rogue. Then, there's a man who's sitting at the window. Me, the fighter. This is one of those places where meeting in a tavern has like a problem, because how can you tell these people are even capable at all? At long last, my quest to gather warriors to kill the great dragon Darudak can begin. I need people of skill, of might, of wit, or this enemy will be greater than any they have faced before. That's a dragon slayer. One eternity later. Great beast, it is time for your doom. 
foolish mortal. You think you can defeat me? <laughs> Do the thing. Oh, you want me to? Yeah, the thing. Just, just like, get him. Oh, okay. What, what is he doing? What, what is this? <laughs> what the fuck? This fighter, aka me, stands out much like yourself. Red, mid-length hair and a marking under his eye, almost like a bloody tear. He carries around a rapier and seems pretty occupied in his journal. He's dressed like a noble fighter, despite having little armor on him. Since you're starting initiative first, what do you do? Kragen says, I go first to the red-haired man. Pleasure to meet you, sir. My name is Kragen, and I am searching for allies to join me in my quest. I couldn't but notice you're armed and figure your experience. I respond with, I could be. What is your mission, cleric? Locke could tell what he was based on Kragen's vestments and the cross around his neck. No normal civilian would come into our tavern dressed in pearly whites after all, so yeah, we weren't metagaming. Let me explain. I am looking for the holy blade known as the... The rocks, the rokes, the row. <sighs> Frostmore. Will Breaker. Row. <laughs> you see, it just doesn't land, okay? Come on. Cool names for our swords, guys. Cool names. The row. <laughs> Seriously. It was stolen from our church, and I was tasked with safely recovering it. Do you know who claimed it? Not yet, but I feel I'm getting close. I need only a party to help me along the way. No man can achieve a strong feat by himself, especially of this caliber. I don't do well with fanatics. For context, Locke isn't by any means religious. As far as he knows, he thinks Kragen is trying to, like, convert him to the god he's devoted to. Ah, so you do not believe in the gods? Fair enough. In any case, I won't riddle you with my goddess's beliefs until you're ready to learn, but I do need to know your decision. Will you assist me or not? I'm in, but in exchange, I want your help too. I need to find someone, and there's a high chance blood shall be spilled. Are you willing to ride that on your shoulders? It depends. Innocent lives should not be taken by the blade. They must be judged within reason. I promise me, these guys are not innocent, not in my eyes, but you can be the judge of their fate. All I want is answers. Very well. Now let's see if we can find more allies. No apologies. I never caught your name. It's Locke. We spent a good chunk getting to know everyone and their personal quests before we get to our first combat scenario outside of the hub against a band of goblins that were planning on rampaging through the city. Artemis. Okay, is it Temis or Timis, man? Come on, make up your mind. Artemis does a few tricks here and there, but quickly breaks down when a goblin's blood spills on his clothes, leaving us to finish the battle ourselves. After that, we end session zero with us leaving the hub for good to venture on. Time skip. We're now in session six. At this point, we found the row and claimed it as the Paladin Zone after getting a blessing from his church. And now we're focused on my character Locke's quest line. We're attacked by mercenaries who have disguised themselves as civilians. And for the sake of quote unquote high stakes, the dungeon master had it so that they're higher level than us. At this time, we're level six. The mercenaries are level 14. Yeah, a little overkill. Don't you think? During the battle, Kragen is practically dead when one mercenary does a critical hit to slit his throat. Somehow myself, Sebeli, and Artemis fainted, and Sergius was too dazed to do anything. Then this happened. Locke. You wake up chained to the stone walls of a prison. Your arms are restricted so where you can't move them, but your feet and chain and you're gagged. Screaming is no choice. I got a bad feeling about this. A long, quiet pause, because I'm clearly uncomfortable with this internally, but externally, I'm just like, wait, what? I'm what? Wait, you're not doing this now, are you? I try screaming, despite being muffled. Can you reenact that? I, I'm, I'm sorry? Can you make it sound like you're actually gagged, like, like in real life, so you can be in character? Bro, the DM is running 50 shades of D&D, no! Um... No, I don't want to do that. You have to be in character, or you're not playing at all. Oh my god, this is actually happening. You have 30 seconds to play your role, or you will be kicked. Truth of the matter is, I probably just should have left, but in my mind, I felt like I'd ruined my chance at keeping the friends I made by spoiling the fun for them. But my heart said, if this, just quit. And considering the TLDR... There was a TLDR. Oh, I didn't read it. Oh, God, what's gonna happen? No, bro. Look, I go along with this and learn very quickly that this would be the worst decision I made in a while. Deep breath in, deep breath out. I just say, help, 
Kraken, Sebeli, help me. The doors of your prison swing open. In comes the man who you remember put you in this position. He's being guarded by a tall man who stands tall as a Goliath, wearing, wearing, whoa, carrying a heavy sword. And another is a woman who's likely his advisor, dressed in spellcaster's robes. The man has his face guarded by a hood, but you can clearly see his face. <laughs> what? <gasps> what do you want from me? Hello there. We want you to admit to your- Crispy number four? Seriously? Uh, this thing would hide me. Come on. Can, can I, I go? Seeing this, how does Locke feel? Locke's visibly confused. What does he say? Dude, I can't speak. I'm gagged. You can still move your mouth, dear. For the love of all, that's good. Who are you? Okay, so the man strips off Locke's gag, leaving a trail of drool from the ball gag. He then leads in towards Locke and speaks in a fatherly voice to you. You've been a bad boy. Guys, my friends watch these videos. We're gonna have a field day with this one. Oh my god. You guys, you did this to me. I used to be so innocent. You've been a bad boy, Locke, coming all this way, all for nothing. You're gonna die here, and no one can stop it. No one but yourself. <sighs> what do you want? The man grabs Locke by the chin so he can force Locke to look him dead in the eye. I want you to suffer. You were a slave then, and you will always be one to me. Now that you're here, I can finish what I started. Keep in mind, Locke wasn't like a plaything. He was a soldier made to fight the big bad evil guy's battles. Whatever's going on now is something I wasn't prepared for and something I hoped would end quicker than it started. Expectation? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Reality. Okay, Locke, I need you to act submissive now. Oh yeah, we're going that route. I ask, act submissive? Ugh, you know, call the man master, beg for your life. He's tempted to kill you. The least you could do is try to beg for your life. Or I could like walk away, that's an option too. But really I just say, um, I'll give you an example if you want some practice. But remember, you don't have long. I want to hurry the session along. The DM then gives me a not so subtle six minute clip. A BDSM video of two men RPing a slave and master. Not like anime stuff, but like real life adult. Bro, it's bad either way. I wouldn't like this either way. At the heat of the moment, my brain brings back the trauma from an old game I was in, where I was in a similar situation. Long story short, it was what put me on hiatus from D&D for three years. And at this point, I shut down everything. DM. I'd like to, and I'm not overreacting or stressing this enough, this is DM legit whining. No, you have to get into character. I'm not in character. i me. And I want to say this is sick. I'm not doing it. Why? Because I told you past experiences, and I would rather not relive them. So can we please either retcon this, fade to black, something? The cleric jumps in to say, yeah, DM, she's right. You need to cut this out. Shut up. No one's talking to you. Dude, he just had to toss in the homophobia. Oh. The days cannot catch a break. You can't just retcon things in real life. So no, you're a slave now. Get over it. Listen, you either roleplay as Locke, the submissive bitch, or you're getting kicked. Then I guess I'm kicked. Fine. So I'm kicked. No more words are exchanged. No apology, no whining. I'm just kicked. Though while I'm in the middle of logging off for the night, I get this little message. Oh, I love it when you guys give me the screenshots. Oh, I mean... I'm so sorry this happened to you. Yeah. You are no longer allowed in our campaign. You couldn't stick to your character and were very disorderly. I hereby remove you from our campaigns and won't allow you to join any future campaigns. Good day. Hi there. First off, I want to say that that's totally fine. I wasn't interested in joining anyway, but thanks for the potential offer. I'm sorry you didn't enjoy my company, and I hope you have a great rest of your week, and enjoy your D&D sessions forward. God bless, goodbye, what was in the blocked messages, come on, man!
just as a little aside, this was later. The DM had changed their profile pic, so that's why the profile pic is different if you're curious. By the way, you sounded very convincing when you were gagged. I bet you would sound great in real life if that happened to you. I bet if I did that to you, you'd love it. I Pass! I don't know what any of those blotted out words are and I don't want to know. Just pass! Passing on this! Anyway, I've made this longer than it should be. Again, I'm not speaking with the DM anymore, and I'm happy to say that. I also was eventually able to finish Locke's character quest, and I've moved on to a new character. But let's hope he doesn't have a horror story I tell. Until then, this has been my horror story, and I'm retiring for the night. Have a safe rest of 2024. Oh, by the way, one night when I wanted to put the story behind me for good, I did end up telling the party, except for the barbarian, since he had locked off at the time, about what the DM had said. And as it turns out, the DM and Rogue are friends, and she admitted the DM was recording me during the interrogation scene with the big bad evil guy. I asked her to get in touch with the DM so he can delete it, but she ended up blocking me too, so yeah, that happened. But again, I'm happy to say I'm trying hard to not let a bad apple stop me from enjoying this hobby again. I'm having fun, I'm doing better, and I'm just glad of a backbone let me get away from problem players like this. TLDR. I meet a group of players after getting my bearings back into Dungeons and Dragons after my trauma story three years ago. They became friends of mine until I see the DM's true colors. My character has gone through trauma, and the dungeon master decides to revise it to suit his own... gratifications. I'm no longer friends with the dungeon master, and I'm happy to say I'm enjoying D&D, despite this incident. Hey guys, I found the TLDR! But seriously. Okay guys, we've seen some crazy stuff. But this is now in the top 10. I recently joked that the reason I'm asexual is because I'm not attracted to women, and I just think men are freaking crazy. And yeah, some clearly are. Dude is taking down bad to a whole nother level, my god. Look, if you're into this, good for you. That's awesome. Some people, not a lot, but enough that I know this, occasionally accuse me of sex shaming and... No, okay? If you're into this stuff, that's great. But if you're being weird about it, I reserve the right to make fun of you a little bit. And yeah, this is definitely being weird about it. Consent is important in all sorts of intimacy. And consent is important here too. Not to mention, what the heck were the other players thinking when they were hearing all this? Are they just like sitting there, uncomfortably listening to the DM doing this? Ugh, it's just not good for anyone involved. I have a bad feeling the DM is like testing this scenario with a bunch of different women hoping to get one that's actually into it. Ugh, the thought scares me quite a bit. Hey, that's a wrap. If you guys enjoyed, you'll probably enjoy our 10th Tomb D&D actual play. It's kind of we hard recently not to think back reached the end of our show. Everything. It was awesome. It's linked everything in the cards. But before happened. you go, please do leave a like on this video and subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down in the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment you like this to let me know you made it to the end of the video hey by the way if you have your own horror stories you can send them directly to us there's an email down in the description down below send your stories our way for a chance to be featured in one of these videos but hey even if you don't have any stories in essence like comment subscribe i'll see you all next time farewell all right whoa voice crack